<laughs> He's having a little nap there. Um, so I, I've got you for 40 minutes and I want to teach you guys um, the, the things that I did in my business because uh, if you don't hire, then in my experience, you drown and you get stressed and you get frustrated and work sucks and we're in this business to be the best people that we can be because you know, we thought, hey, we're going to go out there and we're going to make a difference and then you get stuck in business and it sucks because you haven't got people around you. So I'm going to try and fix this problem for you. So um, here's just a bit of my paraphernalia. So I've got Summit Digital on the left, which is a marketing agency that mostly deals in construction. So my dad's a bricklayer. <laughs> so I naturally attract and talk to a lot of uh, construction style businesses. I also built a niche business called Tradies Get Online because when you niche, the riches are in the niches. Um, so I <laughs> I'm going to try not to say too many of those things. Um, but yeah, Tradies Get Online is like my happy place. It's where I go to do work for tradesmen, people that just need our help more than ever. And those are my guys, um, those are my people. So I spend a lot of time there. And then uh, Stephanie Campanella, my name is very long, uh, it's Italian. So uh, it means little bell. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Um, so stephaniecampanella.com.au, that's where you'll find all my Instagram links and all that other um, jazz, alrighty. So uh, just taking you way back, back to, uh, back to a very long time ago. <laughs> um, I, I am, well I wouldn't say just, but I'm a graphic designer. Um, I went to Hornsby TAFE and I studied graphic design. While I was there, uh, one of my web teachers said to me, Steph, you're going really well at web you should probably go out and get a job. And I thought, holy cow, Chris, really? Do you think I'm ready to go and get a job? And he goes, just go and do it, who cares? And I was like, radio. So in 2009, I just went and got a job as a web developer, even though I had never ever web developed in my life. <laughs> um, so I jumped right in and uh, I was working for a company, very fortunate, we were working with Adobe Business Catalyst so you didn't really need to know much web dev. That's why I excelled. <laughs> and uh, I did a lot of marketing with them and I got taken around to all the cool marketing people, Brian Sher, Kerwin Ray, rah, rah, all of these marketers. Anyway, I learned a lot of marketing and I learned a lot of uh, web dev and I, and I just gritted my teeth and I got through it. And uh, then I thought I'd go visit the rest of the world, the, you know, the agency world. And so I quit my little job in Castle Hill and I moved out to a big studio in St. Leonard's. Woohoo! I'm a real web developer now. Um, so we dealt with bigger companies, David Jones, rah, 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 who cares, anyway. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was at this agency for uh, 11 months and four weeks, just enough time for them ret to retrench me, and I get nothing. <laughs> so imagine, uh, well, I'm like 22, um, Italian family, so I don't really go out very much. I had to stay home a lot and go to bed too early. <laughs> I'm, I'm making up for that now though. <laughs> um, so yeah, imagine uh, I've been in a job and uh, that, was, that was my job, that was my thing. I'd get up in the morning, I'd go, I'd give it my all and I would give so much to the, to the team and to the customers and I'd, I'd have conversations and they'd bring me along to the meetings and rah, rah, rah. And then next thing you know, they just dropped me. And at that very moment, I realized that I had no control. I had no control of where I was going or my, de you know, my job, my destiny, my, my corporate life. Everything was thrown back in my face, basically. Um, so yeah, it was a Tuesday or Wednesday at about two o'clock that this happened. And I live in Castle Hill, so I'm in St. Leonard's and I can't get home because the Hills buses don't start till four o'clock. <laughs> So not only was I jobless, but I couldn't even get home. So I had to hang around. But at that, <laughs> at that very moment, I, I said to myself, I am never, ever going to not have control of my destiny ever again. And so for the next four weeks, uh, I began. <laughs> I began to hustle. So as a freelancer, web dev, branding, whatever you do, you always get people, hey, can you do this for me? Hey, I really need, I've, got a, I've just got this new shoe business. Can you build me this shoe business, you know, website? It's, oh, it's not really e-com, it's a couple of shoes and a payment game, maybe, I don't know. Can you do that for me? I've got a grand. Or, um, 
um, I need a logo done. Um, can, can you come and do a logo for me? When I was um, working for the man, and a female, both, <laughs> when I was working for the man, I had people asking me that question or those questions all the time. Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? And I was always like, no, no, no. Like, I work in St. Leonard's with a studio. I couldn't possibly take any extra time to do this sort of thing. Um, so yeah, when I got left uh, in the dark, I was like, right, that's it. I'm going to call all these people that, um, that used to you know, call me for help. And I reached out and I started hustling and I started uh, making conversations with people and generating work. And my first check was from Cancer Council, 950 bucks. I will always remember uh, that moment, getting, uh, getting the work done in my pajamas, in my room, with my cat on my desk, <laughs> and uh, getting paid for that work. And I was like, holy cow, we can get paid to do this stuff in my pajamas. Very cool. So um, I networked. Um, I matured out of my pajamas, and I went out and I networked, and I built relationships. And um, I uh, thought I was super pug. <laughs> so I am like, you know, I'm hot, hot shit. Let's just say shit. <laughs> I, I can build you a website. I can do your branding. I can do, oh, yeah, you want content? I can do content. I can, man, I had, I had it going on and I was super happy and, oh my God, look at the, you're running a business. I was like, yeah, I'm running a business. And I was top dog. And then... Uh, and then this happened. <laughs> so, and this might be where you're at right now. You might be killing it in business, but you're drowning and you feel like everything's sitting on top of you and you, f you can't take a breath and you've got a client calling you and you can't pick up the phone because you haven't done what you said you were gonna do yesterday or was it two weeks ago? <laughs> or was it a month ago? So I, I created this for myself. And I think that's the first thing we need to do. We create our, our own environment and we create our own frustrations and we create our own frustrated clients because we, you know, we need to grow and we've got to make money and we've got to pay bills and we've got to pay the rent. Um, but very quickly, um, we start to drown. So where did we begin? I took a big leap of faith and just going back again with the Adobe Business Catalyst stuff, I don't know WordPress, my, you know, HTML, woo, I, I, I think A, href equals, duh, duh, I think that's about all I know now. I don't, I don't come from a web background really, I'm a creative. So how the hell was I going to hire someone to do something for me if I had no idea how to even do it myself. Um, so I had to take a big risk and I had to jump and I had to believe in myself and believe in the fact that I could go out and generate more work. I could go out and find some more, you know, groups of people to talk to and to network with and to stretch myself and, and to generate more work. But I knew if I was going to succeed, I needed a team. So big leap of faith, yeah? So my first hire was a designer. Um, now I'm a designer, but I'm sitting there designing the sites like a rock star because I'm the best designer in the world. That's, that's just, you know, all right, cool. And, you know, the phone's ringing or the accounts are going um, or, you know, I've got to go, go to a sales meeting or I've got to do a handover or I've got to, I don't know, sell another site. So... You know, I can't just sit here and do all the work. I need help. So the first person I got was a web designer. And that took three years for me to make that step. So I was on my own for three years, trying my best to, to smash it. And I wasn't really growing. And I wasn't really getting anywhere. And then my, my designer came on board. And wow, holy cow. <laughs> He's actually really good at design too. Who would have known that? <laughs> and my clients really like his stuff too. Who would have thought that? I thought they were just with me because they were buying me. Like, holy cow. Um, so very quickly, I got time back. Um, I was able to go out and go to more meetings. 
I was able to, yeah, you know, design all of the designs that needed to be done. We get a website, we, we always do two homepage designs and once you've picked a homepage design, then you do an internal and then we might do some more internals and, you know, there's a lot of designs to do. And so just giving that to uh, my designer, I was like, holy cow, I've got so much time back. Now, realising that I could push some more work through, I thought, I can, I can actually um, get more work done. And if now that I've got a designer, I can pretty much flick things over within the day or within the, you know, the week. And I was like, damn, if, if I had a web developer, imagine what I could do when I had a web developer and a web designer. Now, I was using uh, contractors. I was using a contractor here for web dev in Sydney. He was moved down to Albury. And I was using a guy in the UK. And those two guys were my web contractors. So everything that we did from design went over to those guys. Boom. Um, and, you know, sometimes they've got their own things to do. <laughs> and they've got their own business to run. So, you know, I, I kind of get in line and get in the pecking order and wait for them to finally finish my work and then finally come back to me. Um, so getting a web developer on made me um, be able to actually run the show, be able to go, yep, I'm going to put a maintenance plan together for you and we're actually going to be able to do the work because I have the men sitting here. Um, so that was amazing. Um, my next hire was my junior lady boss, but she, I hired her to, to cover for me because well, <laughs> we've got a designer, cool, design's done. We've got a developer, awesome, that's done. I'm generating more work and finally I'm profitable for like the first time ever. I've got people in my business. I need to give more of the things that I'm doing to somebody else as well. Now we're doing social media, we're doing email marketing, uh, content needs to be proofread, etc. So I, I created this uh, email marketing social media role and I had a bunch of people come through and uh, my current um, girl that fills this role, she just had a great attitude and when I spoke to her on Skype and I interviewed her, um, she, was, she didn't know how to use all the tools but she had the best attitude and she has changed my whole business because I was able to let go and empower her and by doing that she has empowered everybody else in the business. I can't tell you you know, you think that you need a designer and you think that you need a developer, but you actually need someone to do, check all your emails and do all the email marketing and do the social and, and book your meetings and confirm your meetings and all these other little things that have got to get done because you just want to stay in your sweet spot. You just want to stay integrated like and, and talking to people and networking getting it out and getting out there. Um, so my email marketing social media girl became... Um, my junior lady boss. Now, <laughs> systems are better than superstars. So I had some great stuff, but before I could do anything with those guys, I needed to have a system in place. I needed to be able to give them um, the job and then for them to actually go through it from top to bottom to get the whole thing done how I like to do it. Um, so I, of course, have software. So uh, teamwork. So I use teamwork to project manage. Who here has a project management tool that they use? OK. And you're all freelance web devs. Yeah? No, no. <laughs> Okay, so t teamwork is my project management tool. That's what, I, that's what I use to have all the projects in one place and all the processes and everything. Um, Slack is my, uh, my little chat box. Uh, it's a place where we go to talk about jobs and, and, you know, and life and what's going on. Uh, Voxer is my tool for, it's my walkie-talkie. So when I finish a, uh, a meeting, I'll jump in the car and I will literally hit Voxer and go, hey girls, just finished uh, my meeting and it went really well and they love the designs, let's get building, I'm going to invoice this person, can you remind me to invoice this person, 
um, all good, rah, 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 rah. So it's you know, a nice, fast way to, to talk to them rather than just chatting all the time, yeah? They get to hear my voice. Um, we use Manage WP to uh, manage all our maintenance and care plans. We use SEM Rush to do our SEO, uh, keyword research, even social media posting. It's, it's only new in there, but it's incredible. Um, expensive, but damn well worth it. Uh, one report from SEM Rush can seriously sell you a client uh, good cash. <laughs> uh, we use Canva. Not Photoshop, we try not to, try not to use Photoshop because Canva is so easy to pick up and it, I can bring on any VA and they can come into the business and they know Canva. It's, it's well known. Photoshop, I don't know, that takes a, that takes a good skill. Um, we use Rev to um, transcribe. So if I create videos uh, and they go up to YouTube or Facebook, uh, then they need to be transcribed so that they're more visual in the search engine um, results. We use Xero to obviously do invoicing, because why else would you use any other tool? And I use PayPal to pay my guys in either US dollars or Australian dollars, depending on how we've negotiated um, that whole pay section. <laughs> All right, so teamwork itself. So without this tool, I cannot hire any staff. I can't tell anyone to do anything because there's no process in place. I can't go, hey, gee, I want you to design a site. He goes, all right, I'll do it my way, I guess. No, you have to follow the exact process in the same way because I deliver a product to the customers and I tell them certain things and they should be expecting certain things. So when I tell them then there's going to be designs and there will be uh, flat JPEGs and then the JPEGs will be loaded into InVision and the client will see all the designs and everything. Jared needs to know that because he needs to know all those tools. He needs to know how to do all those things. Um, so I cannot, uh, you know, push enough that when you're sitting here and doing the job that you're doing, like say you're, uh, I don't know, building a website, let's say, every little task that you do to build that website, you need to write it down. You need to absolutely put the process from A to Z. You're doing an SEO audit for the first time and you, you open up the client's website, step one. You open up Notepad or something, step two, open up Notepad. Step number three, what is the domain? Put the domain in like every little process. Otherwise, <laughs> I've got some funny slides coming up, but um, otherwise it's a mess. And how do you know if it's been done the way that you were supposed to do it? Um, if you think about when you launch a website, well, it's pretty obvious what needs to get done. Go and launch the website. Well, no, 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 wait a minute. When we go to launch the website, we've got to add Google Analytics, we've got to add robots text, we've got to add webmaster tools, we've got to make note that we launched on this day at this time, we've got to tell the client we're about to launch. Like, there is a whole process there that needs to happen just for going live. Now, hey guys, can we go live today? No worries, that'll just be like, da -da 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 -da, bing, done. Forgot to do the no follow thing on robots so the site doesn't show up in SERPs. Great, well, <laughs> I can't do everything, that's why there's a list. Um, so this, this is like one example um, of one of the processes. Website delivery, 2018. So when I put a proposal together, there are goals in the proposal. I put the goals inside our live new project because the team should know what the goals are for this website. We want to involve them as much as possible so that they are on track and they get it. We're not just building a website that looks pretty. We're going to build a website because it's got to do this, it's got to do this. And one of the guys will say, oh, I'm good at gravity forms. I can, you know, do this and do that. So. Yeah, there's got to be a whole thing here. Even like, uh, hello sign, create doc. Like, I need a document created so that I can get the client's signature on the contract. Is that done? Like, so it's, there's a little bit for me in there, but there's a lot of it for now my staff, yeah? So, I can't tell you how important a project management tool is and setting up of your processes before you even hire is like super important, yeah? <laughs> All right, so I love Nigella Lawson. 
I love cooking. <laughs> if I could just spend every day cooking, I that would be that would be my life. Woohoo! Surfing and cooking. That, that's what I would do. <laughs> um, now I watch Nigella, and she's there throwing in the the sugar and the flour, and then you put it in the mixer, and then da da da, -da and she's making the cake. And it, oh wow, I can make cake just like that. Yeah. She's she's telling you the process. She's talking about it. But when you follow her on TV and you're in your kitchen and you're trying to follow along, oh, salt, pitch of salt, oh, crap, too much salt, your cake doesn't quite turn out. It's because you didn't follow her actual recipe, the one that's in her book. You know, you've got to go buy a book to get the recipe, to get the process on how to build a cake just like Nigella. <sighs> Building websites is exactly the same as making a cake. Now here we have a beautiful chocolate ganache cake. There's Kit Kats around the outside that have been nicely straightened out. There's an elephant laying in the ganache. It's obviously a sponge. I mean, you would know that, right? So I'll be like, oi, can you go make this cake? No worries. This is what we do to our web developers. We go, oi, can you just go and make a website? And they go, sure, <laughs> I'll do it my way. <laughs> well, guess what it turns out like? <laughs> And you're like, you are fired. Are you serious? That is not a cake. That is not a website. How dare you deliver such rubbish? But it's you who has failed your developer. It is you who has to take ownership. And it is your fault. And you are going to be eating that shitty cake. <laughs> I'm a big uh, baking fan. So, um, so here's one more for you. You want to send an email. So you're running email marketing for your clients and you've just been given the text from the copywriter and you've, you've already got a template organized. Brilliant. You just throw that copy, well, sorry, you throw it to your, uh, to your staff and you go, can you get that email out? I need it tested ASAP. So, uh, so they just go away and do it. And uh, it looks like this. <laughs> because they didn't know that there had to be some headings in there and some sort of design and, you know, not actually just send it to the client looking like this, like, hello. Um, so yes, I, I just threw a couple um, extras in there just for fun. <laughs> All right, so teamwork's massive, but you've got to know your processes first. If you don't know your processes, then the software isn't going to do anything for you. So you need to sit down this week when you work, Monday morning, first thing, Everything that you do from go to stop, you need to write it down. I know that seems boring, <laughs> but it's going to save you time and you're going to be able to basically duplicate yourself. And here we are over here. <laughs> All right, so Slack. So we use Slack to communicate in, um, for the team and build a, com a community and build a culture. Who here um, uses Slack? Woohoo! All right. It's the best tool. It's on my phone. I can jump in. I can leave a little chat. Um, it's on the desktop. It's awesome. So we have on the, in the pink, um, obviously we use that section for all the projects. So every active project that we have uh, in the website 2018 list, there is create new Slack channel, add members to Slack channel, you know, like Seems really basic, but it has to be done, and it's part of the process, yeah? So, yeah, on the left is all the channels for the projects. Left, yeah? And then on the right is obviously uh, all the fun communication that is going on. Now, I don't want work to be boring, and I want to get to know my staff. So, uh, every single day, the team have to share their big win and their focus today. So... Um, one of the boys is saying his big win from yesterday is something. I, I hit it for privacy. Duh. Uh, <laughs> my big win yesterday, something went live. I checked the something site and it's responsive, but I can't see any more errors. Website's all good. My focus today is to check on uh, website contact form. It's not sending properly. He's going to finish some website response. Like, you know, hey, that's, that's not all the things that he's doing today, but that is like his big win from yesterday. So he's, he's winning in the team and he can celebrate something and then he's focused today so guys I've really got to get this done and everyone else should know that this is my big focus because if something comes up that someone else knows about they go oh 
he was really working on that today. I should probably tell him that the site went down or something crazy like that. <laughs> um, here's another. Good morning. Uh, my big wins yesterday was that I was able to create a landing page for X and the forms connects to campaign monitor and uh, there's a newsletter sign up and the website connects to MailChimp and the forms and gravity and FAQs are in and I was able to pass Steph Campanella's web pages in the mobile friendly test. Good work. Um, my focus today is to start building the website. Have a great day, everyone. Even better. Um, Kat. My big win yesterday, I was able to finish the blog article, the company profile, the pop-up form, responsiveness, like, yep, cool. She says, oh, last night I was able to watch the finale of my favourite series, LOL. Um, my focus today is to follow up on projects uh, and create updates for clients. So she's sharing personal wins. So, of course, what happened after that is, oh, my God, what are you watching? Please tell me more. Like, because we're building community inside our um, our, our little staff Slack deck here because we want to get to know each other. I want to be able to know what's going on, um, you know, if there's wins and losses and, and things to focus on. It builds a team. It builds community. Someone said to me, actually, just before this started, um, uh, having an overseas team is very different to having an Australian team, right? And I'm like, no. When I had Australian staff, I did it the exact same way. I used teamwork and I used Slack and we sat across from the desks but we would you know, chat and do all the things because obviously they too, we have to talk to all the Filipino staff. Um, but it's, it's the same thing. It's the same systems and it's the same beliefs um, that, are, that are the whole thing. Um, all right, this is the fun stuff. If you don't know what we're selling, how the hell do we know who to hire, right? So, pen and paper, if you have, or computer. Oh, there we go. What, what are you going to do? Because we are in an ever-changing business and there are things popping up every day and you will get phone calls from people that want you to do all sorts of things all the time. And if you're not solid in your offering and you know you've got your core to do the work, then you just say yes. Yes, I need that job. Yes, yes, I need that job. Yes, I need that job. And then you're stressed because you can't deliver on the job because you've got no resources or you haven't bought the thing yet that's going to deliver that thing, yeah? So what I wanted to do is make sure that we're really super clear on what our business actually does and get solid on it. Like my niche um, business, Tradies Get Online, we do websites and online marketing for tradies. We talk to tradies, like tradies, we use their language. We, you know, we, I use spirit level to say that that's how we measure Google Analytics. Like, you know, there's a whole language there. Um, but we know exactly what we do for that business. No, we're not going to do branding. Okay, you go somewhere else and do that. We could probably do it, yes. But no, it's not very profitable for us. So we're not going to do it. So this might be some of the things that you're doing, yeah? Audits. Website maintenance, SEO, pay-per-click, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook ads, woohoo! <laughs> Facebook posting, website building, workshops, podcasts. What are you going to do? Because if you don't know what your core is and what exactly what you're going to do, how the hell are you going to hire staff for it, yeah? So, another fun exercise. Think about what you want to do in your business, yeah? So if you're going to be the agency that's going to do SEO and pay-per-click, then where do you fit in this business, yeah? So I like to put a flatter yourself and a keep it real list, yeah? Because you want to think about what am I really good at and then what am I not so good at? And you want to be damn honest with yourself because you don't, you know, I do not build websites. <laughs> I would be there for hours trying to unpack a plugin to a WordPress and however you do that mysterious thing. So that's, I'm no good at that. <laughs> so that's on the uh, keep it real side. Um, so flatter yourself. What are you good at? Are you really good at WordPress training? And do you love it? Okay, 
It goes on the flatter yourself um, side. Are you really good at networking, generating sales? It goes on the flattering side. Do you really suck at design? Then don't ever do design ever again. It goes on the keep it real page because you know you're going to need to get someone to do that stuff for you. Um, so what have I got? Flatter yourself, creative thinker, podcasting, networking, communicating, showing enthusiasm. Woohoo! Keep it real. I do not like doing development. Sure, I'm a graphic designer, but that was like 2007. It's a lot's changed since then, and I am definitely not going to be doing any design. Um, audio engineering. I mean, I downloaded Audacity, and I tried to do, you know, get, get in and try and do the podcast myself. But are you serious? I've got to go generate some sales. <laughs> I can't be doing all that. Um, checking work. I'm horrible at checking work. I also am an incredibly bad speller, so I will not pick up any spelling mistakes either. So I know that I cannot be in charge of those things in my business to be successful. Okay, I could try and do all those things. I could definitely go home tonight and download WordPress and put it on a server and try and do however the hell you do that and watch some video. <laughs> but how long would that take me to do? And why the hell would I want to learn that? Uh, I was in another room earlier today and this lady said, uh, she was asking some questions from one of the other ladies and she said, you know, I'm doing this WordPress thing and it's really great and I, and I can give back so much, but it's all moving so fast and I'm not really sure how I'm going to keep up and how I'm going to keep all doing all this development. It's like, whoa, you are never going to develop a website ever again. Like, you will get someone in that role to do that thing for you so that you can flourish and be happy and be in the, the role that you're meant to be. Um, so really consider your services and really consider um, your, your honest self. Your, uh, you flatter yourself and, uh, and keep it real. Okay, here's an exciting one. An org chart. Has anyone done an org chart for their business? So like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, so you're in business and you're sitting there and you're doing the design. So you got the designer hat on. And then you go out and you go do a networking thing and you're doing sales and handing out business cards. I'm doing sales and marketing, I'm doing networking. All right, cool, put that hat on. And then you go back and you need to build someone and you haven't built them for ages and that's why you've got no cash flow. Oh crap, I better go do my accounting, yeah? You put that hat on. So you're, you already have an org chart. You just haven't mapped it out yet, yeah? I didn't even know what an org chart was, so someone had to point this out to me. <laughs> so for me, when we first started, there was me, lady boss, and then there was me, head of design, and then there was me, Oh, I was a horrible developer. <laughs> and then there was me, project manager, and then me doing accounts, yeah? How exhausted do you think I am? Is this familiar? <laughs> this is where we are now. And this is where you can be. If you know exactly the service that you are going to deliver, and you know who you're going to deliver it to, and you know what you're good at, and you know what you just simply suck at, then you can start to build your org chart. So what do we got here? We got you, head of the business. I think that's where we want to be. <laughs> um, junior lady boss. She, she uh, matured to that name. She was, she was a VA, but she's a rock star. And I just never realized. And now she gets called junior lady boss. Um, there's the project master, not project manager, project master, because Kat is our project's queen. She knows everything. She knows exactly what's going on. She knows how many sites we've currently got active. She's writing the weekly updates. Hey guys, just letting you know, this is what we completed this week. This is what we're gonna do uh, next week. And by the way, this is what we need from you. She writes those emails that goes to the client. How does she do it so well? because I built a process for it. Developer one, developer two, developer three. Designer one, designer two. I don't know how many developers you're gonna need. 
you're going to be doing some really heavy stuff, some e-commerce stuff, like thousands of products, you might need more than one man. Uh, designers, designers, I mean, designers are awesome. You always need a designer. Uh, social media manager, audio and visual. I mean, there's so much going on in that audio and visual space that, again, oh, it's too hard. I haven't learned it yet. No, 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 stop. You want to do a YouTube channel? Okay, cool. You, you get a camera and you start recording and you get someone that's going to do your top and your tail and your audio fixing and all that stuff. You've got to know what you need to do first, of course. You've got to put the process together. But um, you are not going to do that. <laughs> now, the best way that I like to build my org chart is in Trello. Um, quite often used as a project management tool. Yeah. So if I look at all the people and if I look at all the jobs and, and the positions that, that I'm going to have here, right, then I can, then I can actually build the thing that I'm going to use to then go out and hire someone. So Monday, first thing, all week, open up a Trello board, put the different sections, put the different charts of accounts, that uh, charts of uh, employment that you have, right? And fill these cards. So did you start by making phone calls on Monday or did you do accounts? Um, so there needs to be an accounting section in there. Um, did you, did you do some project management? Did you do some emails to clients? Start putting that in there. Did you do some designing? How did you do the designing? Was it in this? Was it in that? Put that all in there. Um, we want to build the role because when we are frustrated and there's so much going on, we just need help and then we just hire and then we probably hire the wrong person and then it's their fault for not delivering for us. Whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. Did we arm that person with the right role? I so often get business owners just go, oh, I'm, I'm looking to get a VA. There's a VA service in the Northern Beaches that's really cool. I'm, I'm going to give that a crack. And they go, oh, cool. So what are they going to do? I don't know, but they're going to take all my stress away. It's like, well, you haven't even built the role yet. Um, so you can seriously just fill this as you go. And I even still get my team members to jump into Trello and to record the types of jobs that they're doing. So, for example, my junior lady boss is still spending a lot of time doing email marketing. My email inbox is flooded. I need her to get out of email marketing and get into my inbox so that she can respond to more people and push the jobs to the rest of the team. So I now know, because she has told me all the things that she does and how she gets through her entire day. I now know that she does way too much of this tech stuff. And I thought I had already relieved her because I hired a second lady boss, Kat. But Kat's too busy helping everyone else do the stuff over here as well because there's so much to do. So I even get my staff to fill this out for me. And we look at it and we go, whoa, there's so much that you, no wonder you feel so overwhelmed, yeah? <laughs> Um, so very important to know what you're selling, build your org chart and get in your happy place. Do the things that you want to do. All right, where the hell do I go to get staff? Uh, so I believe that we are in talent management. That's what we're doing. We are managing talent. We can't do everything as a business owner. So we need the talent to be able to uh, do it for us. So, I am not going to tell you that I hate Fiverr or love Fiverr, but if you have never hired staff before, then you need to start talking to other people around the world. Yes, Upwork is a dirty place and only shitty web developers are there, but you might find your best web developer in Upwork. They might just be sitting there. I have ongoing conversations with freelancers all the time because you never know when they've just finished with another job or another contract and you never know that they might be coming up. For example, this week on Skype, a chick that I hired like two years ago to do a little bit of social marketing for a, a perfume company, she came in, did the social and she walked away because she had something else to do. No worries, not a full-time staff. She came back to me just the other day and said, Steph, hey, how are you going? I'm like, hey, babe. Um, 
her name's actually Bay, not just Bay. <laughs> um, she's like, I just wanted to tell you that I've, I'm now full on freelancer and I do funnels for coaches and I know you're building a course and I thought you and I could work together again. And I was like, well, good on you for following me up. You're the bomb. Tell me more about these funnels and how you're now an expert in this stuff and let's see if I can use you. Um, so I have the most fun in online jobs, onlinejobs.ph. I have some amazing rock stars from the Philippines uh, in that network. There are some awesome people on Upwork, but of course it's, I don't know, it's like the dirty place to go. Fiverr is super cheap. Uh, 99 Designs Free, like there's heaps out there where you can go and get staff. Um, but you've just got to start having conversations with talent so that you can bring them on. But remember, do not jump into step four until you have done step one, two, and three. You know exactly what you're going to sell. You've got your sales docs. A sales uh, coach once told me, you are not allowed to sell anything that you don't have a sales doc for. I was like, okay, I'm not allowed to sell anything I don't have a developer for. <laughs> all right, oh, there we have questions. Two minutes, oh, okay, all right. All right, questions? We've got, we've got about two minutes for questions, or three or four or five if we take some of the afternoon break out. Okay, all right. Over there. Okay. Go, go, go. Awesome Prezzo, by the way. Oh, thank, I thought you were there. I was like, whoa. <laughs> hey. Just one quick question. Um, do you allow your employees to start talking with your customers and clients, and how do they respond to that? If you go to my Summit Digital uh, Google My Business page, you will actually see reviews from uh, clients and they say, five star, I love Rose, she is amazing. I'm going, I love Rose, what the hell? But hey, Rose talks to the customers and they love her because they can get back to her like really quickly and she responds because hello, I'm in meetings all day. So yes, my, uh, my clients know key people in the business and they talk to them all the time yes even so much they leave reviews about them not me like okay cool whatever <laughs> do you only let certain people talk to certain people or do you have a just key people uh, or your junior from a lady client boss perspective, or? so my my two girls that run the entire show those girls talk to clients the boys the designers the developers the social media managers da, 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 um, not so much they, and, and not because, no, because I believe that it should be a succinct message and one person should be delivering that. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, hi. Did you ever have like a negative experience with hiring? Oh, yes. That, like a false start? Yep. How was that? I had a staff member for three years and he was really shit. So, <laughs> so I ended up moving him on and so he put porn links on my personal websites. But he was a very shit web developer, so even I could work out that there was actually just a redirect, and I deleted the redirect, and then the sites went back and went live again. Like, that's why I fired you. When you tried to hack me, you couldn't even do it. <laughs> but, and whoa, Jesus, the pressure was building, because what else is this guy gonna do? And should I never ever hire again, because that one guy ruined my entire day. It was June, like, I remember sitting in my desk going, holy shit. The sites are going, oh, Russia, <laughs> But yeah, nah, boy, I, I went hard after that. I talked to more and more people because I never want to be bottlenecked by one developer. I want to have many people that I can be able to pull in and pull out of the business as it grows. Yep, over here. Hi, if you're using people over, from overseas uh, as staff, how do you deal with the time lag? Uh, they start at 9 a.m. Sydney time and then they finish at about 6 or 7. Even I've got one guy, so I've got nine, I've got Bangladesh and the rest are all in the Philippines. Okay. And even he works our hours. So they just work your hours? I literally say if you want a full-time job, then we need you from 9 till 6. If you can't work those hours, we don't have a job for you. Okay. Because so it's my business and my rules. Okay. All right, thank you. No, no worries. And also the time difference is only two hours from oh, Sydney nothing. time to Philippines. Yeah. yeah, it's not too bad. 
yeah. It feels a bit lonely when you get up at 7 a.m. and you're like, hey guys. It's like crickets. <laughs> What's your hiring process like in terms of Poor. interviews and... Okay, um, so there is a whole layer of uh, hiring processes. The most fun one is just talking to them and seeing what the hell they say back. You might have noticed that one of the girls' responses, her English wasn't very good. She's just been brought on and she's being basically babysit by the other boys and she's going to come up and her English skills will get better because she'll be writing every day. Um, I have general chats to these people and just ask them and flick them emails. Literally, just stalking Upwork the other day. I uh, was talking to a guy, hey man, what can you do? No worries, cool, all good. Someone else is you know, going to help, but all good. He goes, cool, cool. I said, hey, so what are you passionate about? What do you, what do you like doing? He goes, I'll read my bio. I was like, I don't want to read your bio. And if you don't have time to even talk to me, you ain't getting hired. So that there is like a whole process to making sure that they're the right fit for you, yes. I think I start with a Facebook stalk. <laughs> <laughs> a Google store, yeah. But yeah, there's a whole process. Steph, I've got a quick question. Okay. Um, when it comes to procedures, which yeah. is something that I have to do on a daily basis and I struggle with because there's so much. Yeah. What do you use? What are your steps to do that? Like Google Docs, is it, is it a spreadsheet? Is it, is it video? How do you portray these steps? so that other people, your staff, can follow them effectively? Yep. It's all in teamwork. So their Google Docs mm. or their videos, um, I, again, I don't know how to build a website, but I know what I expect to get. Uh, and it's uh, Kat's job to actually technically check if the developer has done the right thing or not and has followed the process. And we'll literally go, well, you didn't do this, so this is how we like to get it done. Here's an example and here's some comments on it. So it's Google Docs, but it all sits inside teamwork. As lists. Yep, as, yep. Yeah. Like, and then they will link off to literally a doc or a yeah. spreadsheet or like a video. Like Digital Pacific, my hosting, um, they, you know, you want to do a redirect. Well, okay, the redirect needs to be done. Here's the URL, here's, the, here's what you do. You literally go into Teamwork and go to that template and you go redirect, WHM redirect. And it's like, go here, then go here, then go here. Like there's a set like list for that. If it's something more detailed, then it would be a Word doc. It would be like Google doc. Do you do screenshots and things like that as well? Yeah, step I, by step? I even make like videos. If it's something that's more like for me, then I'll make a video and I'll just drop it into Google Drive so it's a you, uh, resource that we can use again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just had a question. Uh, great presentation, by the way. Um, Thank you. Just like meeting people in, in person, like meetups and even conferences, have you had found that it's to be successful? Like have found hiring? that to be successful? For hiring staff or was it mainly online? I don't hire any more Australian staff. Right. That's it. I, I stopped that uh, in September, August last year, and I, I brought on more Filipinos, and we got more work done. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's like a really common question, even from clients. Like, I tell clients that I have Filipino staff, and they ask, can I get one? I'm like, no. <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, that's like, are they any good? I'm like, yeah, they're good. Like, otherwise, I wouldn't accept their work. Like, there are absolute rock stars out there. It's just our job to talent manage and to find them. So they're full time? Full. The only way to hire staff is full time. I don't want to say that enough because they need to support their family and have a shower at the end of the day. <laughs> and if they're not getting paid enough, then they can't do all those things and then they get attracted to another job. You don't want them to be attracted to another job. That is also why I do the wins and the, the daily focus because it engages them and we're part of a team and I don't want to leave that team because we're flourishing and we're, we're cool and da-da-da, you know? So, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> right, thank you.